So maybe you're like me, you just bought a brand spanking new radio and it's now time to use it. So how do I set this up? Well, today we talk about it. Okay, so the radio that we're working with today is the Jumper T18 Pro V2. And I made a video on my initial impressions of this radio here. I'll leave the video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. And you might have another radio, but it really doesn't matter because these radios all behave the same, no matter the shape, brand, or manufacturer. Okay, so before we set up our radio, we need to know how to navigate the menus of the radio. Obviously, the power button here puts the radio on or off. Besides that, the main thing here we'll be using is this navigation wheel here. Now, this can vary from radio to radio. Obviously, I'll be saying that numerous times throughout this video. But in this case, you do have a scroll wheel here, and this will let you scroll through the menu, as well as selecting by pressing down on the scroll wheel here. Besides that, you have a system menu button here, and this will take you to the system menu. You have a return button here, so if you wanna go backwards, you can hit the return button. If you press and hold it, it will bring you back to the home screen, which we have right here. And this, you can obviously customize the screen, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. It says that you have your model, you have your page, and then you have your telemetry button. We will go through all these in the uh, short term. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is set up the foundation for this. What I mean by that is like your time, your dates, your region. They don't know where this radio is going to. It could be anywhere around the world. So you do wanna set that up. And we are gonna start by doing that in the system page. You wanna press and hold the system. And to navigate around the menu here or pages, you have this page button here, makes sense. And if you press the page button, it sequences through each page. Now, if you wanna go backwards, reverse, you press and hold the page button and it goes to the reverse. Now, some radios might have a forward and a back page button. This one has only one, so one short press to go forward and long press to go backwards. And then you can scroll down with your scroll wheel and we can set our time and date. So we'll do that right now, do that quickly. Okay, so our time and date is now set. So let's keep going down, see what else we can change. And you can check other things also in this page as well, like your version for your firmware. In this case, I have 2.3.14, and that's the latest firmware available to me at the time of filming. And this is a really good transition to talk about the OpenTX firmware. Now, this thing was shipped with OpenTX, obviously from the factory, but to get the best out of your radar, you do wanna to update to the latest firmware. Also, if you do update all your models, customizations, you might lose that information you know, when you do update the firmware. So it's good to update the firmware right now and then build upon that new foundation. If you wanna see a video on how to update your radio with OpenTX, yeah, leave a comment down below saying that you wanna see that and I'll make a video on that. I did that numerous times uh, before I made this video, so um, I can make that video for you if you really wanna see that or if you're really interested in seeing that. All right, so to get back to the home screen, we can either hit return a couple times or just press and hold, and there it goes, goes to the home screen. Okay, so we talked about the system button and the system page and what's in there. The next thing you wanna do is build a model, and we did it with the model button, which makes sense. So you press and hold the model button, and here is your model page, and obviously you can use your page button here to sequence through some of these pages in here, and we will be going through these pages here in a few moments. And the first thing you wanna do is set up your model name, as you can see right here, and you can name this whatever you want. You can name it Mobula 6. A lot of pilots like to use the receiver. And why is that? Because it doesn't really matter if you find the Mobula 6 or a GEP RC plane or a NASGAL, it really doesn't matter. As long as the receiver is the same, that's what they use. So in this case, I have a FR Sky D8 receiver in here. Most people would just make a model just for D8 receivers, make another model for your second receiver, whether it be D16, uh, maybe Express LRS or Crossfire. And they just make a model based upon the receiver. So once you switch to that model, it should work for every drone in your fleet. In my case, uh, I just do like to label them. So when I do go to the home screen, I can see the name of the craft that I'm flying. And that's particularly true if I'm flying a specific craft. For example, I might have numerous radios with Express LRS, but they really aren't the same because in one case, I might have an Express LRS drone that has GPS, so it's made for long range. And that might have some certain switches made specifically for maybe GPS, GPS return, and some switches that I wouldn't have assigned for my normal freestyle cruising drones. So it's easy as just selecting it Certain model, and then you can change the, same, the name here. In my case, it's gonna be Mobula 6. 
Now, as you can see that the letters here are in lowercase, if you wanna get an uppercase letter, you just press and hold, and it goes to a larger letter. All right, select and return. Now you can further customize this by adding a picture or image. I don't have a picture of this, but if you did have a picture, you can select right here and then select the picture that you want. So I don't have a picture of the Mobile 6, but you can add that in there as well. Okay, so now that we have our model set up in here, we have it named, we chose an image. It's now saved as one model in our radio. Next thing to do here now is set the inputs for all these switches and for the gimbals. Here's flight modes and then inputs. Inputs where we wanna be. So we have the first four here already set up and as you can see it says aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. And obviously this is for an airplane but we, we still use these sticks here for that. The ones that we don't have set up are the other auxiliary switches. So that's the switch we're gonna use for either arming, disarming, changing our modes crash, flip, beeper, GPS rescue, whatever you want, you can use these auxiliary switches or these knobs to assign those. And that's what the input page is here for. So use your scroll wheel, go to the next switch here or selection, which is five. Now most people use auxiliary five for their arm disarm switch. And that's particularly true also if you're gonna use Express LRS. So this should be the first auxiliary switch that you use and assign should be your arm disarm switch. Now you can use any switch on this radio. I typically like to use the biggest one here on the left hand. So you just select it, you input the name. In this case, I'm gonna name it as arm. Boom, all right. The source right here. Now, this is where you decide what switch you wanna to use to arm disarm. So we're just gonna select it, let it flash, and you can scroll through all the switches here available to you. The easiest way is to select it, let it flash, and then choose the switch that you want, move the switch, and it should automatically select it. There you go, SF. So it knows that, so we're good there. Pretty cool. Now we hit the back button, the return button. Go back here, and you can see it says arm, 100% switch SF. Now I wanna assign a switch for my modes. And by modes, I mean like angle, horizon, or acro mode. I can change between the three different modes when I'm flying. So same thing here, select six, all right, input name, and I can just choose modes or whatever I wanna call it. Um, hmm. All right, so mode, and I wanna have a switch here for my modes, just like that. And typically I use this switch right here. And it's pretty cool, it knew my positions, 100, zero, and minus 100. Hit the back button or return, and now I have my mode. All right, so I'm gonna assign my third switch as flip. I'll use it as crash flip, so flip. It says flip, cool. Go right here, select my source, same as this one. There you go. And the last one here, I'm gonna name it as beep. All right, looks good. Select my switch, and this will be my beeper right here. Perfect. All right guys, so we have our inputs here and this will be used to control our drones. All right, so now we're finished with the input page. Let's go to the mixes page right here. And it's the same thing. Just remember your sequence here because we have the first four already assigned and you can see here elevator, aileron, throttle, and rudder. What we need to do here is do the next four here, the same as these switches. All right, and then select this and then use the arm switch. There we go, we're saved. Perfect, it, it knew it immediately. I call the second one mode, so that's what I'm gonna call channel six, mode. Perfect, and okay. Flip, perfect, switch, and I think we use this one as the crash flip. All right, beep, and then we use this as a beeper. Perfect. All right, guys. So as you can see, the mixes are correct. Okay, so now we have our inputs and our mixes set up here. It's time to actually bind our drone to the radio. And the simple is going to the model page, choosing the model that we have. We have only one model set in here, which is the Mobula 6. We did that earlier. We named it and we added a picture to it. 
And it's as easy as scrolling down to your internal and external modules. And we have internal RF and external RF. The internal obviously is the internal four-in-one multi-protocol and your external is your JR Bay here. So all we do here is just go to the internal since we are gonna be using the internal module, select that, turn that on, and there's no other <laughs> module in here, so that's fine. And then choosing your actual protocol. X, that's fine. And then we choose D8. Change it D8, select that. Then we just go to bind. I'll put my joint in bind mode here. There we go. I hit the bind button here. But that was quick. That was really quick. I think we're good. Yep, I have RSSI. So I'm just gonna unplug this. Pretty cool. So our radar now is bound or bind to our drone. So if I do plug this back in, I should have telemetry on here. Telemetry recovered. Pretty cool. So now it's telling me I have telemetry. This drone does have telemetry reporting. At this point, this radar here is all ready to go. Now you can go ahead and further customize your radar to your needs, whether it be change your display, change your splash screen, choose a model picture for each drone. You can fully customize this right here. So here's an example right here where you can change the image. I did download some images from my computer to this radar. I highly suggest you use a PNG file. So you go to your models page and just like before, you go to right here and select the image that you want. So it's pretty cool. I did have one, I named it Mobula 6. Is that pretty cool? Uh, it depends. Now right here, the home screen, you can't really see the model on here, but you can customize the screen as well. And the easy way to do it is by hitting either the telemetry button right here, and you can change your main view here and choose the widgets that you want. In this case, I could add some widgets. So let's do setup widgets. And right here, I have my widgets on my screen, so I can customize that even further. Uh, I really like this picture right here, so I'm not gonna put any information right here, but I could put a picture of a drone or something here. So let's see if I can put the Mobula 6 right here. I'll put it on the top one instead, that makes more sense. And I can scroll through all the options that I have. Here's the Mobula 6 right here, and I'll use that, boom. And now I have my Mobula 6 right here, so I know which model that I'm flying. Um, besides, I can add more things like telemetry, and I might do that right here. So I have a gauge, you can add a timer. If you did set that up, I don't really care for a timer, so I won't put that. In my case, I'm gonna just, I'll just keep this as the outputs. Keep it right here, oopsie, there it is. And I have the craft right here, my Mobula 6. Now you can also customize the top here as well and put more things, and you can change the theme if you want to. You can change the background color and the main color. Um, do I want to do that? Let's see here. Eh, you can use black. Let's see here. Is that going to work? I don't like the black. Mm, let's see what it looks like. It's processing. And there you go. <laughs> so, you can see the customization here. And it's actually the same color as this T16 logo here. Perfect. Now, does this still give me everything I need? Sure it does. Can I arm it? All right, everything looks good. All right, I, I'm loving this, guys. This is amazing. Can I fly this thing here? Let's see if I can fly it. I, never, I haven't tried it yet with this radio. This would be a good test. All right, let's see here. Here we go, guys. <laughs> there you go. So it does prove that this radio does work. Pretty nice. Disarm. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys, let me know what you think about the setup of my new radio here. Hopefully it was helpful to you as well. And this applies not only to my radio, but any radio that runs OpenTX. Now, if you wanna see my initial impressions about this radio and why pilots also love to hate this radio, click right here. So thanks for watching, I will see you in the next video. Peace.